Willie Nelson's On the Road Again popped into my head. On the Road Again is the story in scripture of James and John arguing over who gets to sit in the best seats in the house with Jesus. And, and they're doing it on a, on a journey. They're on, they're on the road and they're moving forward in life. And Jesus is actually questioning them about what it is they're asking and do they really know what it is they're asking? Do they know what's ahead of them? He knows that they're heading to Jerusalem. And he knows things are going to happen. But they, they haven't looked that deeply into life and faith to have a sense. Maybe they're not capable of Maybe they don't have enough data at that point in their life. That's what I was thinking when I picked the song. Then I got an inquiry in my email asking if I wanted to be a part of a group of local ministers who serve some of the older churches in our, in our presbytery. If we would take our motorcycles to Peterborough for the final event of Bay of Quinty Conference. So you look at the weather, you look at all kinds of things, and you end up saying yes. And so five of us ended up recreating, in a sense, that on the road again of the circuit riders of the late 17 and 18, early 1800s that created our very churches. And we ended up at a church that was founded in the same time frame in Peterborough. It's now called Emmanuel United Church. Most of us still call it George Street United. It is actually the place where many years ago I was ordained. And we're at the last event. 93 years of United Church history in the Bay of Quinty Conference coming to this final event as the conference and the prostitutes wind down. And we enter into this unknown space of what will it be? How will it be? And you've all been, we've, those are on the council know we had to fight through remits and argue, and you, some of you know that not all of us have been happy. We've gone kicking and screaming into this new day. And it's, and in the midst of all that, I have a sense of there's, there's actually an adventure underneath all of this. That if we actually stop and think about what we're doing, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. So we're actually moving with Christ into an unknown place. And we're arguing about where we're going to be within that. Are we going to keep our old familiar ways? Are we going to just travel in the towns and places that we've known where we've been? What's it going to be like? What's it going to be like in this new way of being, this new governance model? And I have to say that what happened in Peterborough was inspirational. It was simple. Every time the church gets together and we have big events, the one thing you can be sure of is that we're going to break bread together, that we are going to have communion. We didn't. We had baptism. We were reminded that we are not in the midst of something, we are at the beginning of something, an evolution of something. That we are so we, it was a chance to renew our sense of our baptismal faith, that faith that says, yes, I believe. I believe in God Almighty, creator and maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to move us and be with us in all things. I believe that in this transition, I and we in our faith will move forward if we keep our eyes focused not on the structures, but on our faith, on Jesus. We set our sense of ministry. And then the really inspirational spot stop part happened when we had to hear from the, obviously the Church of Methodist preachers. And so we had our theme preachers. For those of you that do not know, our present and last ever Bay of Quinty Conference uh, President is the Reverend Kim Heath, and she is the minister of Wall Street United Church in Peterborough. And so she, with Reverend Bill Smith of our uh, conference, uh, our conference executive secretary, presided over this event. And the the theme speakers were 
two people who were brought to the microphone and gave a rather inspirational tandem message. The first to speak was a young girl who was 12 years of age who had attended conference at its meeting in the spring, its last full annual meeting for the first time. And she spoke with the enthusiasm of a youth who had waited for years to be old enough to go to conference youth event to have it be the last one ever. But then she's going on to speak about, but she made connections there, and she made friends there, and she would be carrying them forward. Even though she is speaking at the final event of Bay of Plenty Conference, her church would no longer be in the region that we all share. She will be in a different region that relates to Ottawa. But she had made friends and she knew that her life would transcend that. The second speaker was her grandfather, a man who had served the United Church in ministry for well over 40 years and had become, was a very traditional style of minister and an, an inspirational speaker. He also happened to be the former minister of the very church this young girl had grown up in. Because you see, the Reverend Alan Bennett, who retired in 2006, after almost 20 some odd years at Wall Street United Church and 40 years of ministry, was the grandfather of Patrick, the young girl who had spoken before him and the father of the present minister of Wall Street United Church, the Reverend Kim Heath, our conference president. And he spoke about what it meant to stand in a tradition, and it turned out that this was done intentionally so that we would have a sense of our past, but we would be aware of our present, and that we would have a chance to look to our future. And they spoke of churches that had fallen on hard times, and. Quite frankly, we were in a man in the United Church of Peterborough. We were there because it seats between 800 and 1,000 people. Its present day worshiping congregation is 50. That's the truth across the United Church. We've become institutionalized and have, in a lot of ways, lost our way. And there's a movement now to change that to bring us back to life. So, by the way, the social time after the baptismal service included things like cotton candy and pizza. There were not a lot of young people there, but there's a lot of people that were young at heart. And there was a, a message that the churches that were growing, and the churches that would grow forward and not get caught up in whether we're Region 11 or Bay Conference, or whatever structural things that we have, are the churches that stopped looking at that and had started looking at themselves and their ministry, had looked at whether or not Christ sat in their church, whether Christ was present in what we do, and it was the churches that ironically that were held up as those that had a sense of outreach and ministry in the world were the ones that had hope, life, faith, and, for those that want it, growth. I had the conference executive secretary compliment me at the close and they were doing the final blessings and they were blessing each person there individually on this congregation and its significant ministries that it's, that it's held and maintained. It was upheld there, by the way, that we had received the $5,000 grant for the Missaway project to the north. It's the churches that preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, that are the ones that have a hope. It doesn't matter what label you put on the governance of that church, because that's the human governance, and the real governance is the one that we look to from above. That's where our faith lives and rides. And that's why I come back with this sense of on the road again. I wrote up with this modern day presentation of a circuit rider from the 1700s. 
to discover that it really is about moving forward. Moving forward in faith, moving forward in life, and moving forward together and as disciples of Jesus Christ. And it was interesting because this minister, who was noted for being a relatively saved minister, celebrated the new outreaches in his congregation into street people and other things and, and different types of music. And, and the thing he held up was to do stuff like that for churches that don't know how to do that. And by the way, I forgot to put the picture up. On the road again. There you go. But I want to do this because he closed his message with a song that I first heard and was first introduced to. My daughter introduced me to this song, believe it or not, last summer. And I love it. So that piece is from the Wren Collective. It's an Irish gospel band, if you couldn't tell. But they speak in that song about living in a world of doubt, with the fear that we have to face with each tomorrow, in the sense that what guides us forward is the light, the light of God, the light of Christ. And this is the light for the church, this is the light for each one of us, and this is, this is our hope. Whether or not we ever get a fancy name for Region 11, like the Bay of Quinty, I've decided I'm going to keep Region 11 as my pet name for it, because it reminds me of the Hunger Games and the hope that all they had in that storyline for the future. So that's what I bring back from our conference's transitional event. I used to call it the dying event. From our conference's transitional event that reminds us that as a church, as a church, we can't stand still. As individuals, we can't stay in one place. We are literally always in God and with Christ on the road again. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.